So you've got a, um, a particle, so that's the P in the, um, in the question. You've got a particle P, and it's a kilogram. Where's a kilogram? It's a heavy particle, apparently. Uh, it's suspended from AP and BP. So if P's in the middle, you've got AP and BP hanging somewhere up above it, right? AP and BP, they could be rods or strings or, any, or cables or whatever, they have this ratio of lengths. Say that again. We're going to draw it in a second. Um, AP forms an angle with the ceiling, like that, and then we have to show all of this. Okay? Now, maybe you don't quite have in your head what on earth is going on, so let me help you. I rated the TAS faculty for their twine, and I made, whoop, there we go. Okay, here we go. Now, I exaggerated this a little bit. It's not quite three to two, but it's close enough. Okay, so here is a ma <laughs> it's not one kilogram. Um, I don't happen to, actually, this is probably more than a kilogram, but anyway. Um, you've got an object, right? A particle of some mass, and it's suspended, okay? Now, you can see, these could be rigid things, or as you can see, flexible things. They get to a point where they're not moving anymore. Okay, now think about that. Think, but don't say it, but think back to Newton's laws of motion and what this means about the forces. Okay, just think about that for a second. So here is the picture, right? You've got this thing, it's suspended from the ceiling. You know these things here about the geometry of it, right? And this question down here, and I'll unpack what this language means in a second. This question here is all about saying, whoops, untangled them. This question is all about saying, all right, now I, I'm going to ask you to help me actually verbally, right? This object is not moving anymore. So it is experiencing constant velocity, which means what about the forces? They're balanced. Okay, they're balanced, or there is a net force of zero. They both mean the same thing, okay? Now you guys know, because there's a force acting on you, just like there's acting on this, and therefore <laughs> acting on my progressively tired arms, there's a force on this that's acting downwards, namely... Gravity, okay? But if it's not moving, that must mean there's also a force that's acting upward, right? Now, where is that force coming from? Answer, oh, it's, oh, so it's coming from these strings. So each of these strings is pulling upward on the mass, okay? Now, because of the arrangement of the, um, the lengths of these and also the angles that are formed here, the force that's being exerted by each of the strings, or AP and BP, is different. Okay. Now, why do you think this might matter? Like working out a solving a question like this, why might this be relevant? Where do you have like things in real life that are suspended, that hang, that you know it really, really matters, and you want to make sure they don't? Yeah. Like you have those lights in the shopping centers that are, like. Mounted, okay. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A anything that's hanging up like that. The thing that's most recently in my mind is um, not that long ago. I drew, drove over something that looks like this. Okay, so this, this is the Anzac Bridge, right? Now, just think, right? In fact, this is not that different. You've got these two things here that are meant to be your anchors for this whole situation. And then you have all of these cables of all different lengths. Their ratios are all different to each other. They are clearly not all exerting the same amount of force upward to hold the bridge up in place, right? Now, if you're an engineer, you want to know how much tension is required of those cables to actually keep your bridge up, right? It's an incredible feat of engineering, and this is what it's made of. So, you've got a rough idea now. Let's draw this thing, right? So, I'll show you one more time. Here's what I would model your drawing on, okay? Give me a ceiling, make it horizontal, and then place on it AP and BP such that, actually this is probably, it's probably more like this is AP over here, such that AP is inclined 30 degrees and give me something roughly like this ratio, 3 to 2. Okay, I think this is actually roughly 2 to 1, but you get the idea. You make your drawing and then we're going to put some things on it. Make it a big drawing by the way because it's going to get really busy really fast. Um, this diagram and how I got it from all of here. Okay, there's still some bits of here I haven't put on there. So, you've got the suspension from the ceiling. And you can see I've tried to do this as roughly, roughly three to two, okay? But that's not the most important part of the diagram, just so long as it's in, within the realm of possibility. I haven't labeled them as three and two. Why not? Because I don't know what their actual lengths are. It could be 30 centimeters and 20 centimeters or three meters and two meters, whatever. So I'm just leaving that and filing it away. Now this bit here, AP is inclined 30 degrees to the ceiling. So you have to be very careful with the language here, right? 
So when you say incline 30 degrees to or from, you have to think about how this is oriented and then use that as your starting point. Okay? So here is the ceiling, okay, and it's horizontal, and then I've inclined 30 degrees downwards. Okay? Because it's suspended, so it has to be going down, has to be going clockwise rather than anti-clockwise, unless this is some weirdo anti-gravity you know, suspension. Okay? So I've gone from horizontal downwards, so be very, very careful, because you'll have these inclined from vertical as well. So just read careful this one. Alright, now. Part A, okay? Show that sign of this angle in here. Now, in the question where I got this from, for convenience, they label this as alpha, so maybe you want to label it alpha as well. Show that the sign of that angle, sine alpha, is 3 over 4. Okay, look, it's a triangle. They want us to deal with sine, so where does your mind leap first? Okay, sine rule, perfect. It's not right angled, so I don't really have that many choices. So I'm going to go with. Sine alpha is what I'm trying to get, or sine A, B, P, right? Sine of A, B, P over, <coughs> what's the sine that matches A, B, P? It's A, P, right? Is equal to, right? So what's the corresponding ratio? Sine of degrees, that's the only other one I know, over B, P. Cool, so far so good. Now, having a look, if you know what sine 30 is, Okay. And look at the result you're trying to prove. So where do you think this rabbit comes out from? Where am I going to, what hat am I going to pull this out of? Remember, I've got sine of A, B, P over here already on the left. So all I really need to do is kick that guy over there. Yep, so I'm going to multiply across. Now I've written it in this way, because you know what sine 30 is. I'll just point out, because I know this seems really obvious, but I only just learnt it, so maybe you've never learned it before either. You know the ratio sign, right, the ratio sign? It's just the division sign without the line, right? That's, that's what it is. So that's why you can write it as AB on BP is 3 on 2, yeah? So a lot of countries, like European countries and that kind of thing, they don't actually have a division sign. They just use the colon because they're like, yeah, it's just, we just don't draw your line because that's redundant and mathematicians get rid of redundancy. So you can see AB on BP is just appears here, yeah? So I'm ready. This is my 3 on 2, this is my half, so there's the result I was after. Okay. Now, this next part, you've um, not heard this phrase for a little while, or you've not heard this word rather, resolve. We talked about resolving velocities and accelerations back in projectile motion. Do you remember that? We talked about resolving. You had an object and you're like, ooh, okay. I project it off at some angle. And resolving, what does resolving mean in this context? Okay, so there's like a horizontal component and then there's a vertical component. Why did I deal with, why did I want to separate out one thing into, into two? What was the point of that? Okay, fantastic. You're like, all right, this guy is experiencing gravity and this guy is experiencing nothing. There's, it, it's constant, that velocity. Okay? So I've separated these out in this context to help me work out how the forces relate. And the, same, the situation is much the same over here. Okay? So have a look. The first force I can actually draw on there, and it is already up, down, left, right, and I don't have to do anything with it. It's just not drawn there in the first place. What force is missing? It's gravity, right? Okay, now if you remember, force is mass times acceleration, right? Mass times acceleration. So therefore, you've got a mass, one kilogram, what's the acceleration going downwards? Yeah, it's, um, I didn't write it. Oh no, I did write it. There you go. Okay, so it's 9.8. So going downwards, I'm going to write this as mg, get used to writing that, you're going to write it a lot. Mass times gravity going down. So this is equal to, in our context, and I'm going to write it as one times, it's 9.8. I guess I really should say it's actually negative because it's going down. Does that make sense? I can, by the way, I can leave off. If I've got the arrows on there, they tell me direction, which is the same as what the negative is telling me. So frequently, you'll see diagrams, and sometimes I'll draw them like that. And the numbers just tell you magnitude. It's the arrow that tells you which way this thing is facing. Does that make sense? 